Hello, my friends, and welcome to Kurt Berglund's Baseball World. It's time to check in on our 1938 Chicago Cubs replay with Replay Baseball. It is April 30th, 1938, and we are at Sportsman's Park in St. Louis, if you don't mind. It is game number 12 on the schedule. We're starting a three-game series in St. Louis. Fresh off losing, getting swept by the Reds in a two-game series at Wrigley Field. The Cubs' record as of this moment is 6-5. and five. They are three and a half games off the pace and one game behind their real-life pace. We are using the as-played lineups, my friends, because if we don't, heads explode all over this great land of ours. So, with no further ado, let's see if the Cubs can start to turn it around against the St. Louis Cardinals. On the mound, it's Tex Carlton going for the visiting Cubs against Max Macon, a left-hander for St. Louis. Let's check out the starting lineups and roll some 1938 Chicago Cubs baseball. Don't forget to check out channel membership. The link is in the description for this video. With channel membership, you get access to members only videos, discounts in the secondary store, and a free gift for me every month in the form of PDFs that I create for different cards and dice sims. So check that out. That link is in the channel, is in the video description. Now let's look at the starting lineups and batting orders for today's game. Here's a look at Sportsman's Park in St. Louis. You can see that it is a little bit easier for a left-handed hitter to hit one out than for a right-handed hitter. We'll see how that plays into today's game. The batting orders go like this. For the visiting Chicago Cubs, it's Stan Hack leading off at third, Billy Herman at second, bats second. Rip Collins bats third at first base. Frank Demery bats fourth in right field. Joe Marty bats fifth, he'll play center. Augie Galen bats sixth, he'll be in left. Tony Lazari bats seventh, he'll play short. And Gabby Hartnett bats eighth, he'll be the catcher. On the mound, it's Tex Carlton for the Cubs. Tex Carlton in 1938 was, 20, was uh, 10 and nine. With a 5.42 earned run average, he started 24 games and relieved in nine, in nine others. For the 1938 St. Louis Cardinals, Jimmy Brown leads off at second base. Jim Booker bats second, I'm sorry. Brown leads off at third base. I'll get it right, don't you worry. And Jim Booker bats second at second base. Eno Slaughter bats third and right. Joe Medwick bats fourth and left. Johnny Mize bats fifth at first. Pepper Martin bats sixth. He's in center field. Don Gutteridge bats seventh. He'll play short. Vicky Owen bats eighth. He'll do the catching. And on the mound, left-hander Max Macon. He was 4-11 with a 4.11 earned run average in 1938. So we're ready to go with some replay baseball. Stan Hack steps in the batter's box, and here we go. It is swung on by Stan Hack and hit to center. Pepper Martin pounds the glove and makes the catch for out number one, and we're underway at Sportsman's Park in St. Louis. Billy Herman comes to the plate, and the delivery to him is swung on by Billy, and it's bounced to Booker at second. He gloves it and flips to Johnny Mize for out number two in the top of the first, and that'll bring up Rip Collins. Making kicks and deals to the Ripper, and it's a little jam job fly ball into short center field. Here comes Pepper Martin. He makes the catch. Four out, number three in the first. The Cubs could go down one, two, three. Cubs get nothing. Cardinals coming to bat. Jimmy Brown coming up. And Tex Carlton deals to him. And there's a base hit for Brown to left field. That is collected by Augie Galen. And he gets it back in to the infield. And um, that will bring up Booker. 
Carlton, the stretch and the delivery to look like this. Uh, Brown is holding and the delivery is swung on by Booker and that's a little comebacker to Tex Carlton. He knocks it down, picks it up, throws to Rip Collins and there's one down in the first. Brown moves up to second base and Eno Slaughter comes to the plate for the Cardinals. Carlton the delivery to Enos and that will be our first ballpark check. And I think we're gonna get a hit on that one. It's going to be a, that's gonna be drilled for a base hit to center field, drops in front of Joe Marty. Brown around third, he's coming home and it's one nothing St. Louis in the bottom of the first. Slaughter holds on with a single and Joe Medwick comes to the plate. Now Carlton in a first inning jams, the stretch and the delivery to Medwick and that is a little tap back to Tex Carlton. Tex gloves it, he fires to Lazeri for one and the relay to Rip Collins in time for a rally killing, soul crushing 1-6-3 double play turned by the Cubs, and that will end the Cardinal first inning. They do get a run on two hits. We go to the second, it's St. Louis one, and Chicago nothing. Here comes Frank Demery in inning number two, the wind up and the delivery by Macon to Demery, and a base hit for Frank Demery goes to center field. Pepper Martin collects it and gets it back in, and the Cubs have a leadoff man on in inning number two. Joe Marty up there now, making the stretch and the pitch to the Cubs center fielder. Is gonna be a base hit to right field. Let's see if that's gonna give Eno Slaughter trouble. And it does not. So Stopping at second will be Demery. Holding on at first is Marty. There's two Cubs on with nobody out in the second. And here's Galen. Double play depth for the Cardinal infield. Good chance for, for the Cubs here to even the score. Lazari on deck and the pitch to Augie. He popped him up. In fair territory, short left field is Don Gutteridge calling and taking for out number one. Runners hold. And Tony Lazari comes to the plate. Macon trying to get out of a second inning problem here. Making the stretch and the pitch to Tony is ball four. He walked him and the bases are loaded with Cubs for Gabby Hartnett. That gives the Cardinals an excellent chance to turn two. So their infield is gonna move to double play depth. The stretch by Macon and the delivery to Gabby. That is a ground ball that is hit to Brown at third. He's gonna go to Booker for one and the relay to Mize most definitely is a rally killing and soul crushing around the horn and inning ending. Five, four, three, double play. Turn by St. Louis. We go to the bottom of the second. It's one nothing Cardinals. Johnny Mize, Pepper Martin, Don Gutteridge coming up in the St. Louis second. And Mize leads off with a walk. Tex Carlton causing himself more problems here in inning number two. Pepper Martin comes to the plate for his first trip in today's game. Carlton the stretch, the pitch to Pepper is swung on by Martin and it's hit to left. This is gonna drive Galen back a few steps, but he's got room. He puts it away for out number one and Johnny Mize retreats to first base. Don Gutteridge comes to the plate. Double play depth for the Cubs infield. Gutteridge can run a little bit. Carlton the stretch and the delivery. And hey, strikes out Gutteridge. He gets him with the upstairs cheese and Mickey Owen will come to the plate with two outs and my still planted at first base. Carlton the stretch and the pitch to Owen. He walks, no, he just drilled Mickey Owen just for the heck of it. 
Mickey Owen gets dotted by Tex Carlton, and there's two on with two outs now for the pitcher, Max Macon. Now, Max can handle the bat a little bit, so we'll see what happens here. Uh, Jimmy Brown would be next. The stretch by Tex and the delivery to Macon is popped up. Drifting into foul territory is Stan Hack. He calls for it and takes it. Four out number three, and the Cardinals will leave him loaded in inning number two. We'll see if they end up regretting that later on. Tex Carlton will lead off the Cubs' top of the third. And then he'll be followed by the leadoff, leadoff batter Stan Hack and Billy Herman. The pitch by Macon to Carlton is ball four. So Max Macon walks his counterpart, and Stan Hack comes to the plate. Cubs with a 6-5 and five record coming into today. They're starting a three-game series in this one with the, with the Birds of St. Louis. Making the stretch and the delivery to Hack is swung on by Stan, and that is hit to second baseman Booker. He flips to Cutteridge for one, and the relay demise is in time for a rally-killing, soul-crushing 4-6-3 double play, the second turned by the Cardinals in three innings. And with nobody on, he'll bring up Billy Herman. The pitch to Billy is going to be a little tap back to Max Macon. He gloves it, and he fires to Johnny Mize at first, and it's late. Herman beats the rap. He gets an infield hit out of it, and with two outs, Rip Collins, the former Cardinal, comes to the plate. The stretch by Macon and the delivery to Ripper. Swung on by Rip and hit to right. Eno Slaughter pounds the glove and makes the catch for out number three. The Cubs get another couple of ace runners, but they're turned away in the top of the third. We go to the bottom of three, and it's the Cardinals one and the Cubs nothing. Top of the Cardinal order coming against Tex Carlton. It'll be Brown, Booker, and Slaughter in the third. The wind and the delivery by Jimmy Brown is ball four. So more Tex Carlton wildness puts another Cardinal man on the bases. And Jim Booker comes to the plate. And we will see what uh, Cardinal manager Frankie Frisch has in mind here for Mr. Booker. The stretch and the delivery, Booker squares to bunt, and he gets it down. He bunts it toward Rip Collins, and he might beat it out. Let's see. Um, Collins, at first, is a three. He gloves it, he flips to Herman covering, the sacrifice works, Booker is retired, and Jimmy Brown moves to second base with one out for Eno Slaughter. Now Eno drove in Brown in the first inning with the first Cardinal run. On deck is Joe Medwick, the stretch by Carlton and the delivery to Eno Slaughter, and he comes through with another base hit. Uh, let's see what they're going to do here with Jimmy Brown. Joe Marty gloves it. Uh, and they're going to let Brown score. The throw is cut off at the mound by Rip Collins. It's another RBI single for Eno Slaughter. Slaughter holds on at first, and... Medwick comes to the plate. It's 2-0 Cardinals in the third. The stretch by Tex and the delivery to Joe Medwick is hit in the air. This goes to center field. Joe Marty into left center makes the catch for out number two. Slaughter goes back to first and Johnny Mize comes to the plate. The stretch by Carlton, the pitch to Mize is swung on 
by Tex. It is hit to, by Mize. It is hit to Billy Herman at second, who gobbles it up and throws to Rip Collins to retire St. Louis in inning number three. But they get another run on just one hit. They play small ball, and it works. We go to the fourth, and your score is St. Louis two and Chicago one. Nothing. Sorry, St. Louis two and Chicago nothing. Max Macon will face Demery, Marty, and Galen in the Cubs fourth inning. Pitch by Macon is swung on by Demery and popped up on the infield dirt. It's Booker, and he's got it for out number one. Joe Marty comes to the plate. He's one for one. Max Macon kicks and deals. Marty swings. He hits this one to uh, Brown at third base. Let's see if Jimmy Brown is going to be able to handle it. He gloves it to his right and fires to Mize for out number two. Galen comes to the plate. He is uh, 0 for 1. Making the windup and the delivery to Augie, and it's popped up. This is third baseman Jimmy Brown calling and taking in fair territory for out number three. Cubs are done one, two, three in the fourth. We go to the bottom of four, and your score is St. Louis two and Chicago nothing. Pepper Martin. Don Gutteridge, Mickey Owens, six, seven, eight in the Cardinal fourth inning. The windup and the delivery is swung on by Pepper Martin, and this is going to be trouble for the Cubs. Uh, and Martin hits it to left and deep down that foul line. Back to the wall is Galen, and it's gone. Pepper Martin goes deep. It's three nothing Cardinals in the fourth. Pepper Martin ate only two home runs on the 1938 season, and he just got one of them here. Don Gutteridge comes to the plate. He is 0 for 1. 0 for 1. Carlton kicks and deals. Gutteridge swings and bounces one to Billy Herman. Billy to his left gloves it and throws to Rip Collins for out number one. Mickey Owen comes to the plate. Max Macon on deck. The wind-up and the delivery by Tex Carlton. Let's see what Mickey does with this one. And we're going to have a rare play check with nobody on and one man out for the Cardinal catcher. And that's a seven. It is a looping drive to center field. Coming on is Joe Marty. Let's see if he's gonna get there. He is not. It is going to fall for a base hit. Oh no, excuse me. Marty makes the catch. Second base umpire. Uh, Jose Feliciano says it was not a trap and Frankie Frisch is out arguing with the singer on that one. The singing umpire, Jose Feliciano, calls out Mickey Owen. Did he trap it? Well, we're going to leave that. We're going to say Jose made the call on that one and Max Macon comes to the plate with two outs and nobody aboard. The delivery from Carlton to Macon and he strikes him out for out number three. That is strikeout number two for Tex, but in the third, in the fourth inning, the Cardinals add another run, this time on an unlikely home run by Pepper Martin. And we go to the fifth with your score, St. Louis three and Chicago nothing. Cubs have some work to do here, bottom third of the order coming up. It'll be Tony Lazari, Gabby Hartnett, and Tex Carlton in the fifth, making kicks and deals. Lazari swings and checks his swing. Third base umpire Ray Charles says no swing and Lazari goes down to first on the walk. Gabby Hartnett comes to the plate as the Cardinal infield moves to double play depth and Macon, well, if you're thinking about stamina, Max has faced 16 batters, he can face 31 before fatigue may become an issue. 
the stretch by Macon and the pitch to Hartnett is uh, popped up by Gabby. That's Booker in short center field. He will take it for out number one. Holding it first is Lazari and Tex Carlton strolls to the plate. Let's see what manager Charlie Grimm has in mind for Tex Carlton here. The stretch by making the delivery to Tex and he squares to bunt. Um, it is bunted toward third baseman Jimmy Brown and Tex might beat it out. Um, here's the play by Brown to Johnny Mize and they get Carlton at first. It's a successful sacrifice bunt. It moves Lazari into scoring position with two outs now and Stan Hack comes to the plate. It's a lefty-lefty matchup against Macon. The stretch by Macon and the delivery to Stan is hit to shortstop Don Gutteridge. Don Gutteridge. Oof. Not too much with the glove. <laughs> with the glove. And Gutteridge throws it away. He throws it over Johnny Mize's head. And coming around to score is going to be Lazari. The Cardinals are chasing that one down in foul territory. Gutteridge launched it Butch Hobson style over Johnny Mize and Hack will go to second. It's a two base error, an unearned run, but Cubs manager Jolly Charlie Grimm will take it. And there's the Cubs are on the board. Here's Billy Herman making the stretch and the pitch to Billy. is going to be bounce to Mize at first. Johnny is going to take it to the bag unassisted for out number three. But in the fifth, the Cubs get a run without the benefit of a hit. Say it with me, oh, those bases on balls. Bottom of the fifth coming, and your score is St. Louis three and Chicago one. Top of the order, stepping up for Frankie Frisch in inning number five. Brown has been on base twice. He's scored two runs. Tex Carlton deals to him. And Jimmy Brown draws a walk. Tex Carlton with more wildness. That is walk number four in four plus innings. Tex has also dotted a batter. He drilled me. <laughs> He drilled Mickey Owen back in the second. Mickey's still sore from that one. And now it's Jimmy Booker. We'll see what Frankie Frisch has in mind for Booker. The stretch by Tex and the delivery. And Booker squares to bunt. Um, yes, he does. It is bunted toward Stan Hack at third base. Stan could handle the leather a little. Don't want to go overboard on that kind of a comment, but, and he just threw it away. He just graduated with honors from the Don Gutteridge School of Throwing Errors, and that's gonna be an E5 on Stan. They're also going to give a sacrifice, but Jimmy Brown's gonna go all the way to third. Booker goes to second. There's two on with nobody out in the fifth. And the Cubs bullpen is gonna get going because Jolly Charlie Grimm can't, cannot handle much more of this. Clay Bryant starts to throw for the Cubs in the bullpen. He's a right-hander. All right, Slaughter is up there. The infield is in at the corners, back up the middle. The pitch to Enos. And he struck him out, and he needed it right there. Strikeout number three for Tex Carlton, and that'll bring up Medwick. 
Cardinals don't want to let this opportunity go by. The Cubs scored in the top of the inning and they want to respond. Carlton the stretch, the delivery is swung on and hit to uh, Billy Herman at second. Billy gloves it, he's gonna throw to Collins and that's gonna retire Medwick. But scoring is Jimmy Brown, it's 4-1 St. Louis. Booker goes to third, there's two. There's another Cardinal run, 90 feet away, but two outs. And uh, Charlie Grimm holds up four fingers. He wants Mize walked and Carlton to pitch to Pepper Martin, the right-handed batter. So there's Cardinals at the corners with two outs in the fifth. 4-1 four, four, St. Louis. The stretch by Tex. And the delivery to Pepper is hit to left field. Can of corn for Augie Galen, and he's got it for out number three. But the Cubs score without the benefit of a hit in the top of the fifth. The Cardinals score without benefit of the hit of a hit in the bottom of the fifth. We go to inning number six. We got a picket fence going for the Cardinals. It's St. Louis four and Chicago one. Collins, Demery, and Marty coming up in the Cubs sixth inning. The windup and the delivery by Max Macon is hit in the air to left. This is going to drive Medwick back, but he's got room and puts it away for out number one. Frank Demery comes up there now. The windup and the delivery to Demery is drilled by Demery and it's going to go to right center and it's going to be off the wall. Running it down is Pepper Martin. Demery with pretty good speed around second going to third. The relay coming from Gutteridge to Jimmy Brown is late and the Cubs have a one out triple in the sixth. Signs of life from the Cubs. Here's Joe Marty. Joe is one for two. The infield is back for St. Louis. The windup and the delivery by Macon. And we're going to have an action chart check here. Let's see if the Cardinals can shoot themselves in the foot one more time. And They do. It's a wild pitch. Mickey Owen doesn't block it. And home comes Frank Demery on the wild one. It's 4-2 Cardinals now, and Joe Marty's still at the plate. Macon deals to him. Marty bounces one to Brown at third. He gloves it to his right, fires across the diamond to Mize, and there's two away. In the Cubs sixth, and Augie Galen comes up. He's 0 for 2. The switch hitter stands in against Macon. The delivery to him is a swung on by Augie. This is hit to Booker, and it's off his glove into short right field. Base hit with two outs for Galen, and Lazari comes to the plate as the potential tying run. Making the stretch and the pitch to the former Yankee is ball four. Two are on now. Gabby Hartnett comes to the plate. Frankie Frisch nervously pacing in the St. Louis dugout. And Hartnett digs, digs in with Carlton on deck. The stretch by Macon and the delivery to Hartnett. And it's popped up. On the infield dirt, this is Booker, and he takes it for out number three. Cubs get another run to cut the Cardinal lead in half on two hits. They leave two, however, and we go to the bottom of the six with your score. Cardinals four and the Cubs two. Cubs are in danger of falling to the 500 mark with a loss in today's game. Tex Carlton will face Don Gutteridge, Mickey Owen, and Max Macon in the Cardinals' sixth. Carlton deals to Gutteridge. And Don swings. He hits it to center. Joe Marty in a couple steps. Makes the catch for out number one. 
And that is the first time in today's game Tex Carlton has retired the leadoff batter. Now it's Mickey Owen. He's 0 for 1, the delivery from Tex, and he just drilled Mickey Owen. <laughs> he, he, he just drilled Mickey Owen for a second time, and Mickey is not happy. Mickey is signaling to Tex Carlton that Tex is number one in Mickey's book. <laughs> Mickey goes down to first base. <laughs> the guffaws are coming from the Cub dugout. <laughs> and Tex is so wild, nobody knows if he did it on purpose or not. All right, Macon is coming up there now. Cub corners move in, and the delivery, and it is popped up. Carlton comes in off the mound and grabs the pop-up, the popped-up bunt. Macon fails to deliver, and it'll be Jimmy Brown coming to the plate in his band of renown. Mickey Owen still waving to Tex Carlton from first base, and the delivery to Jimmy Brown is swung on. This is hit to Lazari, and it's off Tony's glove. It's going to roll into center field. Tony has to run it down. Owen will stop at second, and there's two on with two outs for Booker. Clay Bryant is throwing in the bullpen for the Cubs. And I think they got to go get him. Uh, yeah, they do. That's going to do it for Tex Carlton. Out of the dugout comes Charlie Grimm. He's going to make a double switch. Time out. All right. Tex Carlton's done after five and two-thirds innings. You can stick a fork in him. He allowed five hits. One of them was a home run. He walked two unintentionally. He walked one more. You know, he walked three unintentionally. He walked one more intentionally. He hit two batters. <laughs> he hit Mickey Owen twice. Uh, Mickey may not be in tomorrow's lineup. And uh, he allowed four runs. They are, nope, three of them are earned. Two more men are his responsibility on the bases. Owen at second and Jimmy Brown at first. Coming on to pitch is Clay Bryant, who actually was a starter for most of the year for the Cubs. 14 relief appearances, good for 270 innings of work. He was 19 and 11 with a couple of saves and a 310 earned run average. He's a right-hander and he's on to face Jim Booker. Two on, two out for St. Louis. Now behind the plate, Bryant will bat in the number eight spot. Behind the plate, it's one of my favorite of the 1938 Cubs. It's Bobby Garbark and he is their third string catcher. And he is making his first appearance of the season here in game 12. He's going to lead off the Cubs seventh, but for now it's Bryant facing Booker with Garbark behind home plate. Bryant the stretch and the pitch. Booker swings, he hits it to center. That's Joe Marty country and he's got it for out number three. The Cardinals are very quickly done in the sixth. We go to the seventh and your score is St. Louis four and Chicago two. Max Macon has now faced 26 batters. He's on his way to 31 before fatigue may become an issue. It's gonna be Garbark, Hack, and Herman coming up for the Cubs in the top of the seventh. They trail by two. Macon winds and deals to Bobby Garbark, and that's ball four. So Garbark walks in his first at bat of the season. Down to first he goes, and Stan Hack comes to the plate. He represents the potential tying run in this game. The stretch by Macon, the delivery to Hack, and we're going to have a ballpark check. This is hit to right field. That is Eno Slaughter, and he's never going to get there. It is a base hit for Enos. Uh, and 
I don't think, nope, Garbark is going to hold up at second base. The Cubs have two on with nobody out in the seventh. And Billy Herman coming to the plate. Now, you can do a lot of things with Billy Herman. And part of the question is, do you want to play for the tie or the win here in the seventh? And so we'll see what they elect to do. The stretch by Macon and the pitch to Billy Herman, and he does square to bunt. Uh, but it's not a good bunt. It's bunted right back to Max Macon. Uh, Macon is gonna go to Jimmy Brown at third and get the force on Bobby Garbark. It's a 1-5 put out, Hack goes up to second. There's still two outs, but now, there's still two on, but now there's one out for the Cubs here in the seventh, and Rip Collins comes to the plate. He could tie the game with an extra base knock here, making the stretch and the pitch to the Ripper. And that is a comebacker to Max Macon. Um, Macon turns and he throws to Gutteridge at second. And that's all they're gonna get. Collins beats the rap on the relay to first. So Herman is retired one six. Hack goes to third, Collins safe at first. Still two on, now with two outs. Demery comes to the plate. And Joe Marty would be next, making the stretch and the pitch to the Cub right fielder, who has two hits today. And Demery swings, he hits this one in the air to left. Joe Medwick, in his tracks, makes the catch for out number three. And with that, it's time to stretch him out in St. Louis. With the score, the Cardinals four and the Cubs two. Bryant will face the meat of the Cardinal order in inning number seven. It's Slaughter, Medwick, and Mize. That's a pretty good middle of the order. Uh, and the wind up and the delivery to Enos is swung on by Slaughter and a short fly ball to right. Coming in quickly, Frank Demery, and he's got it for out number one. Joe Medwick comes to the plate. Joe is 0 for three, the pitch by Bryant. Medwick takes a mighty cut at that one and he drives it to left. Galen back on the warning track, makes the catch for out number two. One more biscuit for breakfast and Joe Medwick drives that one out of here, but no. Johnny Mize comes to the plate, he's 0 for 1. Bryant the delivery to the Cardinal first baseman. It is drilled by Mize, and this is going to be trouble into the right center field gap. Joe Marty running it down. Johnny Mize around second base, heading to third. The relay coming from Lazari is late. Mize in with a belly whopper slide into third base. A two out triple for St. Louis puts a big insurance run 90 feet away for Pepper Martin. Uh, Bryant is going to go from the windup. The windup and the delivery to the one for three, Pepper Martin, is hit to center. Let's see if Joe Marty is going to catch up to this one. And it is going to be a base hit. That will drive home Mize. It's 5 2 St. Louis on another RBI by Martin. And Pepper holds on at first base for Gutteridge. Don Gutteridge, the Cardinal shortstop, is 0 for 3. Bryant, the stretch, the pitch to him. He is swung on by Gutteridge and hit to Billy Herman. Billy gobbles it up and throws to Rip Collins for out number 3. In the 7th, the Cardinals get another solo run. But it's a big one. It puts them back up by 3. We go to the 8th. It's the Cardinals 5 and the Cubs too. Now Max Macon is strolling out for inning number eight. And uh, 
He is not fatigued yet, but it could happen at any point here. He's got Marty, Galen, and Lazari coming up the five, six, seven batters for Charlie Grimm. And if anybody gets on, it'll be Clay Bryant or a pinch hitter. All right, make and winds and delivers to the Cubs center fielder and Joe Marty swings and hits one to right field. Let's see if that gives Eno Slaughter trouble. It does not. Marty will hold on with a single. He's two for four. Now Augie Galen. Macon is now fatigued. His left arm about a foot and a half longer than his right arm at this point. And the Cardinals decide to get their bullpen going. And that will be... Boy, that's good. <laughs> that's going to be uh, Clyde Shown, a left hander, starting to throw in the bullpen for manager Frankie Frisch. Galen is up there. Cardinals infield, double played up. The stretch by Max and the delivery is a line drive caught by the second baseman, Jimmy Booker, scrambling back to first base is Joe Marty. There's one down. Cardinals are five outs away from a win in this game. 5-2 St. Louis, we're in the eighth. Lazari comes up, making the stretch and the delivery. is going to be a base hit by Lazari to center field. Let's see if Marty is going to try for third on the arm of Pepper Martin. Uh, Martin's arm is a four. Marty's running is a three. That makes a minus one. And I did that, my friends, without taking my shoes and socks off. Holding at second will be Marty. So two on with one out. And we're gonna get a pinch hitter for Clay Bryant. Clay goes an inning and a third, allows two hits and a run. And that's it on his ledger. And coming out of the dugout to bat for Bryant will be outfielder Carl Reynolds. Reynolds is a right-handed batter, and we'll see if he stays in the game to play the outfield, but for now, he's got pinch hitting chores with Marty at second, Lazari at first. Macon's gonna get one more batter. Garbark is on deck. The stretch by Max Macon, the pitch to Reynolds is swung on by Carl, it is hit to Booker at second. Jimmy Booker uh, gloves it and he's gonna flip to Gutteridge for one. The relay to Mize is late. Reynolds beats the rap at first. So Lazari is retired for six. Going to third is Marty. There's Cubs at the corners for Bobby Garbark. All right. First and third. Frisch just watching from the dugout for the moment. The stretch by Macon, the delivery to Garbark is a little tap by Garbark rolling toward Booker at second. He charges, flips to Mize, and the Cubs are done in the eighth. Um, yeah, that's right. So we go to the bottom of the eighth, and your score is St. Louis 5 and Chicago 2. For the Cardinals in the bottom of the eighth, it'll be Mickey Owen, Max Macon on the top with Jimmy Brown, 891 coming for the Cardinals. Mickey Owen's had a tough day. He's been 
drilled twice by Tex Carlton. And he's 0 for 1. He's up there now against new Cub pitcher Jack Russell, who's batting in the number 8 spot. Carl Reynolds does not come out to play defense in the bottom of the 8th. Russell was in 42 games. He was 6 and 1 with a 3 3. 3.34 earned run average and three saves in the 1938 season. He's a right-hander. All right, the delivery from Russell to Mickey Owen. And Owen swings and hits a little tap back to Russell. He throws to Collins and there's one away in the Cardinal eighth. Max Macon comes to the plate. The windup and the delivery by make by Russell to Macon. Uh, is gonna be uh, tapped on the infield. It's off of Russell's glove. It's gonna be an infield hit for the Cardinal pitcher. So Macon is aboard. Uh, coming to the plate is Jimmy Brown. He's a switch hitter. One on, one out for St. Louis in the bottom of the eighth. Russell the stretch and the pitch to Brown and it's trouble. This is going to be ripped down into the right field corner by Jimmy Brown and Frank Demery has to go get it. Around second goes Macon. He's going to stop at third. Brown goes to second with a one-out double, and the Cardinals are in, in danger of blowing this game wide open. Booker comes to the plate. The infield comes in at all four spots for Chicago. Eno Slaughter is on deck. Russell the stretch, the pitch to Booker. He's not bunting, and he is striking out. So that's a big out for the Cubs. Two down, slaughter up, Medwick would be next. Russell's a good pitch from getting out of the mess. The stretch by Jack and the pitch to slaughter. Swung on by Enos and this is hit to right. Frank Demery, can of corn and that's out number three. Jack Russell barely escapes damage in the eighth. We go to inning number nine and your score is the Cardinals five and the Cubs two. Stan Ack leads it off. He'll be followed by Billy Herman and Rip Collins. The wind and the delivery by Max Macon is a line drive to right. Coming on is Slaughter. He makes a nice running catch for out number one. And the Cubs are down to their last two outs. Here's Billy Herman. Macon kicks and delivers, and Billy Herman with a base hit. This will be trouble for the Cardinals. It'll rattle around in the left field corner. Joe Medwick has to go get it. Herman goes into second with a one out double, and that's gonna do it for Macon. Frankie Frisch has seen enough, and it's gonna be Clyde Schaun, who will come in the game to try and close this one out for St. Louis. Uh, Shawn is a left-hander. He relieved 28 times. He's six and six with a 4.14 earned run average. And he picked up a save in the 1938 season. He's gonna face switch hitting Rip Collins. Um, now Macon goes eight and a third innings. He allows two, four, six, eight, ten base hits. He walked one, two, three, four, five, five men. Max Macon did not strike anybody out and he allowed three runs. They are all earned. No, two runs, excuse me, they're all earned. Run number three is his responsibility on base. He can win this game, he cannot lose it. Rip Collins is 0 for 4. He is facing Shawn right now. The stretch in the delivery Swung on by Ripper and hit to right. Over by the foul line is Slaughter and he catches it for out number two. Holding at second is Herman and that'll bring up Demery. Frank becomes the last chance saloon for the Cubs in this one. 
Should he reach, Joe Marty would be next. Shown the stretch, the delivery to Demery is a base hit for the very hot Frank Demery to center field. That drops in front of Pepper Martin. Billy Herman around third, he's gonna score and it's 5-3 Cubs, or Cardinals, with the tying run coming to the plate in Joe Marty and the Cardinal bullpen getting going again. Uh, Joe Marty becomes the last chance saloon, but he also, uh, he also is two for four. He is the potential tie run. Bill McGee starts to throw for St. Louis in their bullpen. All right. Down the stretch, checks Demery at first, and the pitch to Joe Marty. And we're going to have an action chart check. See if Shown throws a wild one here. And he does not. It is blocked by the very sore Mickey Owen. Joe Marty in there again. Shown the stretch and the delivery to Marty. And hey, struck him out to end the ball game. Clyde Shawn pumps his fist, and the Cardinals win this one 5-3. Let's give you the totals. For the homestanding and victorious St. Louis Cardinals, five runs, nine base hits, and they committed one and one error. That's it. The Chicago Cubs, three runs, 10 base hits. They had opportunities and they committed one error as well. The win goes to Max Macon, the save to Clyde Schaun, and the loss is saddled on Tex Carlton. Let's see if I can quickly find Tex's record here. Uh, before we depart, Tex Carlton, calling Tex Carlton, Tex, where are you, Tex? Tex is now 0-2 on the young season. With the loss, the Cubs dropped to 6-6, six and six. not a consistent start, or consistently inconsistent, if you will. Our next game will be in St. Louis at Sportsman's Park, and it will feature Cub left-hander Larry French going against Cardinal left-hander Kurt Davis. So a battle of the lefties coming up on May 1st, 1938. Hope you'll join me. Don't forget to check out channel membership. The link is in the description for this video. For now, from Sportsman's Park in St. Louis, your final, the Cardinals five and the Cubs three, in my 1938 Cubs replay. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and have a great evening. So long, everybody.